What I see with students on my lesson tee day in and day out is they cast from the top and all, all their swoosh, all their speed is back here. So the club head is actually slowing down by the time it gets to the golf ball. Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to hit the driver farther and straighter. Yes, you heard me correctly, farther and straighter. I'm going to give you three tips that will have you driving it further and straighter than you ever have. So smash that like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, thank me if this video had a positive impact on your golf game, contribute to the ongoing success of my YouTube channel, and comment. These things help in more ways than you know. Okay, so the first thing we have to talk about when it comes to hitting the driver further and straighter, it's something very simple and it gets overlooked by almost everybody and it's centeredness of contact or very simply hitting the ball in the center of the club face. So let's talk about how this impacts further and straighter. Well, when I miss the center of the club face, you can see the club face will actually twist. So if I hit it off the toe, the face is going to open. And if I hit it off the heel, the face is going to close. So from a further standpoint, think about really what it's doing is it's kind of cushioning the blow. I'm not getting the powerful transfer of energy from the club face into the golf ball because it's, like I said, it's kind of cushioning. Think about if you throw a baseball really hard into a catcher's mitt and, and it snaps back you know that's essentially what's happening here and it's going to slow down the ball speed off the club face now how does this affect straighter well we know that the most important variable for the starting direction of the golf ball is the club face so if i miss the center of the club face and i have this thing opening and i have this thing closing you get the idea i mean who knows where it's going to go now, one other thing that I, I want to discuss here, because not every time I hit it off the toe does the club face open and the ball goes over there. It may, but there's something in a club called gear effect. And they design, I say they, it's the research and development departments at Cobra, Ping, Tylus, TaylorMade, Callaway, you name the company, that this face is actually curved. It's not flat, and we're hitting a curved object. So what happens is when the ball hits the toe, the face opens, but if I get enough friction, which is, I, as a player, I can't control the friction, but if I get enough friction, the ball will gear in the opposite direction. So we've all had that toe hit, and we see the ball kind of curving back to the center of the fairway, or we have that heel hit, and the ball starts curving back to the center of the fairway. Well, we've all played enough golf to know that it doesn't always end up in the center of the fairway because again, that variable we can't control, which, which is friction, the ball might overcurve across the fairway into whatever. The reason they put it in there is it's to help us when we miss the center of the club face. Sometimes it works, a lot of times it doesn't. And again, if I don't get enough friction, between the club face and the ball and I hit it off the toe, it's just gonna go over here to the left. And if I hit it off the heel, it's gonna go over here to the right. Again, I'm a left-handed player. This is a left-handed club. All right, so we're like, okay, I, I get it. I need to learn to hit the center of the club face if I'm gonna maximize my distance and, and I'm gonna hit it straighter. So how can we measure this? And what I use at my golf school, whoop, it's my most used training aid at my golf school, and it's very simply Dr. Scholl's foot spray. Now, down below, I have a link to my Amazon storefront, and the very first training aid that you'll see there is this, because it gets used so much, and it's so easy. Just buy some, it's like five bucks, throw it in your golf bag, and start to monitor this, especially if you're somebody who's struggling with distance and direction. Find out where you're hitting it on the club face because that can have a huge impact on why you're seeing what you're seeing. So what I'm going to do, I've got the track man hooked up here and I want to start to create, create a baseline of what's going on with my golf swing because we're going to try and get it going faster and we're going to try and get me hitting the ball straighter uh, throughout this video. Should be interesting, right? Uh, 
But the first thing I want to do is just kind of create a baseline of what's going on. Where am I hitting it in the club face? I'm going to use the Dr. Scholl's foot spray. And if you're somebody who's hitting it around the club face, I'm going to give you a, a couple fixes. One is, is really quite simple. The other one you might have to work at. So without any further ado, let me uh, tee this ball up here, get my glove on. And we'll see what we can do as far as contact on the face. After I hit it, I'll show it to you. I'll throw some TrackMan numbers up there. Uh, I cannot see the screen from where I am. All right, so let's do this. So centeredness of contact. Great, so I'll pop those TrackMan numbers up there. Uh, and you can see pretty close to the center, a little north of center. Um, ideally, this is being very nitpicky, we would have it right about where I made that little mark. So I only missed it by a couple dimples. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with that shot that I just hit, uh, as you can see from the numbers. But, but ideally, that's where we want to hit it in the club face. And a lot of people don't know that, um, that it should be a little north of center, kind of right in the middle here. Now from a distance component, I've seen people lose 40, 50, 60 yards by hitting it low in the heel. Worst place we can hit it for distance. All right, so we get our Dr. Scholl's foot spray. Hey Mark, I'm hitting it all over the club face. What can I do to, to start hitting it more in the center? And there's uh, really two things, two options I like to give people. The first one, now this might affect further a little bit, but we can shorten the length of the driver. So when I shorten the club, and I'm not saying, you know, cut it in half or anything, but just a, a half an inch, a quarter inch, uh, three quarters of an inch, an inch. When we shorten the club, the dispersion on the face gets tighter. So if you're somebody who's like, eh, not really that concerned with further, but definitely more con concerned with straighter, that is one option you can do. Now, if you're like, hey, I, I need both, I need, I need everything here. A lot of times when I see people miss the center of the club face, what I see is they really just have terrible balance. And so if you think this golf ball is this big and I'm trying to hit it with a club face that is this big, it doesn't give me a lot of room for error. So if I'm kind of moving all over the place coming into impact, of course I'm going to hit it all over the club face if I even hit the club face. So I'm going to make another swing here and we'll pretend I didn't hit it quite so much in the center. And so I'm gonna work on it, and all I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna work on my balance. I'm gonna work on sticking that finish. And you can start to see things that make golf hard or, or complicated is, all right, I gotta swing fast because I want it to go far, but yet I gotta maintain this balance. So we've got conflicting things here. And again, that's what makes it difficult at times. All right, so here we go really focused on my balance when I hit this one. See if we can do a better job of hitting the center of the club face. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting. Whenever I put that little mark with my finger, you can see it's right where I had that mark with the finger. Whenever I do that, I don't know, it's the way the brain works or something, but in a golf school, I'll say, yeah, this is where you want to hit it. I put the student up there, the next one is right in that spot. So I think just kind of being aware, kind of knowing, uh, helps our hand-eye, helps our athleticism. I don't know, I don't have any science behind it, but it's eerie how many times I've, I've seen that happen. Okay, so I got my Dr. Scholl's foot spray. I'm hitting it consistently in the center of the club face. Still not seeing the distance that I really want. So what can I do to hit it farther? And what I encourage my students to do, and I've talked about this in other videos, is I want to hear the speed or see the speed past the golf ball. So if I had a golf ball teed up right here, I'm hitting it left-handed. I want all the speed past the golf ball out here. Because I know if the speed's out here, it was going really fast when it was, if it's fast out here, it was going really fast when it was here. And what I see with students on my lesson tee day in and day out is they cast from the top and all, all their swoosh, all their speed is back here. So the club head is actually slowing down by the time it gets to the golf ball. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a challenge. And what that challenge is, we, we study students that are players that are really fast and can create a lot of speed. And one thing that we see with them is they can not only create a lot of speed from their dominant side, that would be me left-handed, but they can create a lot of speed from their non-dominant side. So I'm going to swing this left-handed, and you can hear that's a pretty loud swoosh. Well, if I turn around and swing right-handed, it's pretty loud as well. Maybe not as loud as this one, but, but pretty loud. And when I get students on my lesson tee, and we'll just use a left-handed golfer as an as a, um, example again, is I'll hear a lot of speed going that way, and I'll say, okay, switch your grip, turn around, let's swing it right-handed, and I hear that, <laughs> which is hardly any speed. So the challenge is, next time you go to the driving range, I want you to make three swings from your dominant side with as much speed past the golf ball as you can, and then the non-dominant side. And, and what we're doing here over time is we want to start to increase the speed on that non-dominant side. Now this is probably something a lot of you have never done before, so be patient, give it some time. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit another one. We're going to see what it does to my speed. So I'm going to go one, two, three. That's the dominant side. Now I'm going to go non-dominant. One, two, three. All right, let's see what we get. So I got the track man still hooked up. Give it a nice ride here and see what it did to, to my speed. Good, so I'm just trying to be more dynamic, just like I was in those three swings I made from each side. Yeah, and that felt great. Definitely felt faster to me. I'll pop some TrackMan numbers up there for you to digest. And on to the next topic. All right, so I'm consistently hitting it in the middle of the club face. I'm getting faster on my non-dominant side, so I, the ball's going further. It's going way further, but I never hit a fairway. So what can I do to help hit the golf ball straighter? And at the beginning of the video, I mentioned something very quickly. You might have caught, caught on to it. The club face is the most important variable for the starting direction of the golf ball. So I have to get some command of the club face at impact to hit the ball straighter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another sport. We're going to go to ping pong. And I'm going to help you understand the club face by using this ping pong paddle. So you and I right now, we're playing ping pong and you serve it to me and I want to hit it to the left side of the ping pong table, what do I do? I'm going to point that ping pong paddle towards the left side. And if I want to hit it back to the right side of the ping pong table, hit that back right corner so you can't return it, I'm going to point it to the right. And if I want to hit it right back at you, I'm going to point it right towards you. Well, I can. it's the same thing with the club face when we're playing golf. If I hit this golf ball and it's pointed to the left, the ball's going to launch left. If it's straight, it's going to launch straight. Notice I said launch. It might spin when it gets out there. That depends on what your path is doing. And if it's to the right, it's going to launch to the right. So how do I get some command of the club face or some understanding of where the club face is at impact? Well, I've got this ping pong paddle and I've got it aligned with the club face of my driver. And just doing something very simple like this, you could use a tennis racket. You've probably seen training aids where people have a, a tennis racket at the end of a shaft or you could tape it around the shaft. But anything like this will help to give you some proprioception, some awareness of where the club face is at impact. Now, as I'm doing this, I start to learn one other relationship here. The back of my glove hand, or that Callaway logo on the back of my glove hand, mirrors the club face. So getting rid of the ping pong paddle, I can use the back of my left hand, or excuse me, the back of my right hand, uh, my glove hand, as a indicator, almost like a steering wheel, right? Like I, it gives me some other 
relationship that I can use to make sure that this club face squares up at impact. Now, the next comment I get is, hey, Mark, I'm swinging it at 90, 100 miles an hour. I have no idea where the back of my lead hand, if you're a righty, it's going to be your left hand. If you're a lefty like me, it's going to be your right hand. I've got no idea where it is at impact. So back to the simplest drill in golf. We can just rehearse this to the top, back to the golf ball, making sure that everything is in line. Now notice when I hit a driver off a tee, I don't want forward shaft lean like I do with an iron and I see that a lot. So I think it's good to have a conversation of what does, what does it look like when a world-class player lines up the driver for impact? And what we see is we see the lead arm, that's my right arm as a lefty, left arm as a righty, but we see the lead arm and the shaft in a straight line and maybe just ever so slightly some bowing of that lead wrist. It would be my right wrist. So that's what I'm rehearsing. To the top, back to the golf ball. To the top, back to the golf ball. And through those repetitions, I can start to understand, command the club face to hit the golf ball straighter. All right, so here it is. We're gonna put everything together. We're gonna get some center face contact. We're gonna work on going faster, which is gonna help with the further. And then I'm going to give a couple rehearsal swings here, working on delivering the back of my right hand to the center of the fairway. And club face follows. I hit it somewhere near the center of the club face with some speed. I should drive it farther and straighter. So here we go. All right, right out at that red flag. So I'm just going to rehearse it a couple times, just really starting to understand what, what that club face is doing, and I'm going to put it together in a golf swing. And that was definitely farther and straighter. Now you know how to hit the driver farther and straighter. Get yourself some Dr. Schultz foot spray, monitor that centeredness of contact, hit it in the middle, get fast on your non-dominant side, and then get some awareness of the club face. Remember the back of your lead hand mirrors that club face. I have two more videos here right now that I promise will continue to help you improve your game. And remember, please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, thank me, and comment.